Cowboy Bebop might not hit all the right notes, baby. But me and you, three, two, one, let's jam. Ah, that's right, Cowboy Bebop on Netflix. What to say, what to say. And I felt it was appropriate that I brought out my bass, man, so that we could jam on this. Yeah, that's right. The long uh, anime, I just finished watching it just to do the live action review. And you know when Netflix drops something and it's like 10 episodes and you've got 10 hours to jam out on something and just get it done? Yeah, I didn't quite get there. So this will be a non-spoiler review just to give my first impressions. And I did watch the entire 26 episode run of Cowboy Bebop recently just like a week ago which i might do a separate review on just to give you guys a little taste of what i think about that uh, it was a long-running series that i never quite got into but when i heard that this was coming out i was like i gotta do my homework just for you folks out there and i <laughs> it was worth watching the anime this i don't know it's not cowboy bebop let's just start off with that it wants to be cowboy bebop this is a really terrible analogy, but I just watched some of the Chucky series. Imagine you have these dolls and you start like pulling pieces off the dolls and start jamming the arms and the heads and the like you start making this thing that looks like Frankenstein's monster. That's what this is. It tries like it wants to be Cowboy Bebop, like it wants to jam on Cowboy Bebop, like it wants to do a remix of Cowboy Bebop, but it does just misses the mark. Now, what's it got going for it? Music. Number one, it's killer. It's killer as always. Music just kills it. It's the one thing, it, it's like a crutch. It just carries this thing. It carries that weight, baby. But as far as like what we're watching here, it's an amalgamation. It just like chops up bits and pieces of episodes here and there, sticks them together in weird ways, and then puts together side plots that don't make any sense. I do not understand what they were thinking when they did this. This belongs with the, um, as I guess like the Netflix remake of uh, Death Note that so started to hit the mark, but then totally veered off course. It, it's not quite as bad as that, but it's, yeah, I think that's what's, what the problem is, is it's just, it's okay. If you're a fan of the anime, you're going to hate this. You're going to hate it with every ounce of your body. But if you're just like a casual fan, you're going to be like, okay, this is all right. This is like some kind of sci-fi thing that I wasn't expecting. Now, let's just run through the characters real quick. Uh, John Cho as Spike Spiegel. I don't know who he's playing. I mean, he's fine. He's a good character. I like him as a character. I think he does a good job in this, this role. But he's not Spike Spiegel. I don't know who he is. But he's not Spike Spiegel. He's playing someone. To, it's as if he lost something there. Spike Spiegel has this weird humor about him, about where he thinks everything that's going on in life, this is just, it's going to happen. There, there's like a kind of like boredom and dullness with his life, but he takes it with a smile anyway. John Cho cares a little bit too much about what's going on. Uh, Mustafa Shakir, he's the closest one to being an actual character. He sounds, he looks like he played, like he watched the anime and was like, I'm going to do my best with this. I'm going to try to sound like Jet Black. I'm going to try to be Jet Black. So good, good to you, sir. You did a great job. Daniel Panetta doesn't know what side of Cowboy Bebop is up, left, right, or down. She never watched a Cowboy Bebop, doesn't know what a Bebop is, doesn't know that she's in space doesn't know the character doesn't care to know the character as far as i can tell has no clue what she's doing this is a totally different person i don't know what's going on there not into it whatsoever her she's terrible as far as i'm concerned her, her acting and i know there's been controversy over everything it's, it doesn't make any sense whatever she was talking about doesn't make any sense because they put her in some revealing outfits and she does some i haven't gotten there but there's some scenes that Lady, get a clue. Uh, let's talk about the other aspect of it, which is so far, and I'm only four and a half episodes in, is, is Vicious. There's too much Vicious. Uh, vicious is in about 10 minutes of all of Cowboy Bebop. 
very mysterious character, not a lot said about him. There's way too much backstory here. I, what I don't get is it's got the Netflix problem, and that's the fundamental flaw with this. There's like nine or ten episodes, and they're all 45 minutes each, and there's just way too much script. They should have edited this thing down. The show itself is 23 minutes long. They should have stuck with that and just left it there and done 23. Like, just remake the, the show. Like, why? Why do anything different? Why try to put your own spin on it? There's things they change for no reason. Just because they felt like it. I don't know why. And they suffer from the problem of say too much, don't show. What I mean to say is show, don't tell. They tell us things that are going on that we don't need to know about when they should have just been showing us those things. And I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to get into that. But just think about it. If you do decide to watch it, I recently had a friend of mine ask me, it was like, oh, Cowboy Bebop was recommended to me. What should I, what should I do? Should I watch this? I mean, I'm five hours in or four hours in and I'm thinking, oh my God, why am I watching this? Where I... Uh, I wasn't like the biggest fan of the anime. I had heard things. I tried to watch it a long time ago and was like, eh, not so into this. I didn't like the genre mashing, but I really did enjoy it once I, once I actually watched it recently. I, when I finished it, I was like, wow, it sticks with you. It's got, uh, there's a lot to like about it. And I understand why it's considered genius and a masterpiece. So I'm there, I'm in. But this is just, it should have been like from the Cowboy Bebop universe. And I could have been like, okay, but they're not the same characters. You know, they just aren't. So if you really, really like the anime, don't watch it. If you're into like some sort of science fiction-y, uh, there's like too much vamping, too much like talking. It's okay. Like it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. And I do like John Cho and I like Mustafa Shakir. I, I cannot stand Danielle Panetta. I don't understand what she's going for. She's just annoying. Like what? There is a cute dog. Ayn is pretty cute. So I'm into that. I don't know. I don't know, folks. Netflix, it's the Netflix bloat, right? I've heard this before. There's a whole article on why Netflix doesn't work. I mean, obviously, the Rotten Tomatoes has it at 50% across the board, fans and, and the uh, audience. It's kind of a mess. And what do they get wrong? It, uh, a lot. A lot. It premiered in 1998. It still looks great today. Catch it on Netflix. You're going to enjoy it. But it's just like, what are you doing? You just don't, un I don't understand what they're going for here. So if you want a full length spoiler review, I can do that. I will, con I will continue watching it just to finish it just for you guys. I probably end up doing a full length re review for this. But in the meantime, uh, if you feel that we earned your subscription, we could really use it. It would really help us a lot. If you could like and share, that would also like... Help us grow this thing as we bring you some more jams. Anyway, uh, my name is Z. I am from Our Reviews Will Kill You, where you can catch our full-length free audio podcast anytime you want, anywhere, Spotify, iTunes, all those great places. And uh, for me, I'm definitely going to jam out as I'm on to the next one. <laughs>